Hi there, my name is Kevin, and if you're new here or you haven't been around for a little while, I've been doing a little exploration into intersection observers, which are really cool and let us do some awesome stuff with JavaScript and know where we are on the page. And they're the perfect type of thing to use for lazy loading images. So in this video, we're gonna be seeing exactly how we can do that. Let's go and check it out. All right, so it's time to lazy load our images. We're back on this same file that I've been working on up until now, but I have made a separate JS file just to keep it a little bit cleaner. Uh, as usual, the beginning code and finish code, there are links to it both down below for GitHub repos of those. So if you want to follow along, you can. All right, so we're in the same file that we've been using up until now to look at event listeners, but I have made one big change to it. Um, so we can see right now my navigation will change, those things will fade in, but my images are not appearing at all. And the reason for that is you can see here in my markup, I've changed all my image sources to data sources. And so the browser is going to do nothing with that, but we can reference it with our JavaScript to tell it when to load the images in. Now this is going to be very similar to how we did the fading in effect, but there is one big difference uh, that we want to use to get it to work properly. Uh, so the very first thing that we want to do is we want to find all of our images. So we're going to do a document dot query selector all. And uh, what I want to do on this one is the easiest thing I think is to just reference any image or anything, I guess, that has the data SRC attribute on it. So it's not going to reference all images, only ones we've set up for lazy loading by not giving them a source, but just by giving them the, the data SRC attribute. So anything you put in a query selector is effectively a CSS selector. So if you just put in like, you know, a body, it would select your body. If you put in dot selector, it, it finds that class, you can put in an ID. So if you put something in CSS with inside of your square brackets, it is looking for the attribute. So in this case, we're finding anything with the data SRC attribute on it. Uh, and that will be the images that I want to load in. Uh, the other thing, let's make a uh, our observer. So we'll just call it image observer is equal to at this point, new inter intersection observer. Uh, if you haven't watched my previous videos on intersection observer, I'd recommend at least going back to the very first one where I introduced the whole concept of it, because I'm not going to be diving deep into all the little things I'm doing right here. I'm just going to be looking at how we can set it up for this one specific case. So if something along the way confuses you, go and reference back to the very first video where I really did a deep dive on how intersection observers work. Um, and this one will probably make a lot more sense. But if you've been following along, there won't be anything too new here. Uh, except I'll do a arrow function here instead of my regular uh, function. So we can do an arrow function uh, like that. And then after that, where you can bring in my options. Uh, so let's just call it image options. Uh, for the options not to give us an error, we do want to bring those up here. So image options uh, is equal to, and once again, we'll leave it blank for now, just because we have nothing to uh, put there, but we will be putting in some options a little bit later on. Um, we do want two arguments here for my function. So we're going to look at entries and we're going to look at image of server because we want to reference back to itself a little bit later. And uh, now we can start getting some stuff going on here. So as usual, we have to do our entries and do a for each. And so for each entry, we want to do something. Um, so our function is going to be, we sort of want to do the same thing as last time. If uh, we can return right away. So we can say if it is uh, entry is intersecting. So if it isn't intersecting because of the exclamation mark there. So if entry is intersecting is false, right away, we can just return else. So when it is intersecting, we want to load in our image. So what we can do for that is um, I think in this case, I'm actually going to bring it in as a separate function. So let's, I think it'd be a bit of an easier way to organize everything here. Up until now, I've been putting everything in the observer itself, um, but it can get a little bit messy when you do that. So why don't we pull this out and put it into its own uh, little spot? So what we're gonna do here is preload image, entry, whoops, entry target. And at the same time that we can then do a image observer on observe entry target. So just like we did last time when we did these sliding, these things sliding in, once we've preloaded our image, we want to stop observing it because we've done what we've wanted to do. We don't have to keep observing that image anymore. Um, so now this obviously isn't going to work yet because we haven't set up this preload images. So let's go and do that. So 
for that, I'm actually going to come all the way up here. Now, you could actually bring this one down lower, but I find it easier to first uh, set it up up here. So I'm going to say function of preload image. We need to give it an image for it to work. And then what do we need to do? Uh, we're going to define a, our source. So our source is going to be equal to the image that we give it. And we can get attribute of data src. So we're just, we're pretty much, we're going to have a function. Every time we run this function, we're going to give it something. So as long as the thing, it's an image that gets put in here. So this could be like one of our images is going to be put in there. It's going to look at that image that we've put here and it's going to get the attribute data SRC from it. Then what we want to do is take that data SRC. Actually, before that, even uh, we want to say if there is no SRC, we want to return, right? So if if something happens and for some reason the, something weird gets put in there or there is no data SRC that gets loaded in, let's get out of there because we, we don't want anything to happen in that case. But if the image we have given it does have a data SRC, we want to take the image SRC and make it that. So this first one here is the actual image source. Like if you were looking at an image in your uh, in your DOM, we're looking at the image's source and we're going to set it to SRC, which is this constant that we've created right here. So we're setting the image attribute data SRC to SRC. That SRC comes to here, which then gets applied to the image that we've just fed into this function. So now what we can do is we can come down to here and what we can say is images for each, because remember our, when we did our uh, document or query selector all here, we're creating a list and we can't apply one observer to the entire list. We have to apply it to each one of them. So for for each image, so out of all the images in for each image inside of images, we want to run our image observer, and we want to tell it to observe that image. So for every image, observe the image, just like we've been doing from the very very beginning. And it should work. And, and I made a big mistake. <laughs> um, and I, I, for some reason, I keep doing this. You might have seen me tweet about it actually when I was playing with this. Um, I put is intersection instead of is intersecting. So of course, is intersection is always false because it doesn't know what it is. So it's oh, it's never going to work. So um, I want to switch that over to is intersecting. I have this really bad habit of put is intersection. I'm not sure why that happens so often, and I never find it. Um, so if we do that now, we should see as I come down. Um, my, well, actually, <laughs> there we go. You can see the images, like they're sort of stuttering a little as I come in because they're, they're actually are being loaded in. Now, what I'm going to do to really show that this is actually working is I'm going to, uh, do, I'm going to take in my image, um, options here. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to change the threshold to be one. And we want to come here and set a root margin, root margin. I'm going to set to zero pixels, zero pixels. The bottom, I'm going to do negative 500 pixels, which is going to be a lot, but um, it should work anyway. If you're not sure what I'm doing or why I'm setting this up or what it means, please go and check out that first video where I explored all of this in a lot more detail. Um, so by doing that now, uh, just really quickly, I'm going to jump over to my CSS file just to show you on my images off screen. I added a border on here, so we're going to be able to see it. And I've given them a min width and a min height. So you can actually see this is where my image should be. Um, and the border on here, which is red, will only come in once this actually kicks into effect because right now it's a broken image, so the border won't work on it. Um, and I've also turned off all my transitions and opacity and stuff just so we can really see this working in action. So once it's 500 pixels within the viewport, you can see it turned red and then it loads in. And then the next one turns red, loads in, and so on and so forth. Now I'm loading these from Unsplash, so it's a little bit slower than it might be. And I can never get to my last one because it's never going to be far enough in. Uh, now, obviously, I don't want to actually be loading them in when they're 500 pixels into the screen. That defeats the entire purpose of lazy loading images. So what you might do instead of this, the threshold would be zero. So it's you, you want to as soon as you get into this space and you'd have this as a positive number. So like two or 300 pixels away. So by doing this, what it means is now instead of being negative 500, so instead of inside the viewport by 500 pixels, it's when it's 300 pixels before the viewport. So any image that's just off of the screen is going or if it's already on the screen, it'll load in right away if you had one that happened to be there. But that means as I go down, my images are loading before I get to them. Now you can see that one actually kicked in a little bit after because it's taking a little while for these to load um, because they're coming from that off source. So maybe even if you're if you do see that this is causing problems, you could push that number up a little bit higher as well. 
Now, one thing I really recommend that you do, I don't have an example of it here right now, but um, based on the research I did, if you have several images that are next to each other, but say like they end up, if you had like five images here and then another row of images there, and you want to make sure that they lazy load separately, just know that when you're by default, your images have like a zero by zero pixel. So you might load in a whole bunch of pictures you don't actually mean to load yet. Um, so I would recommend this could even be like anything that has your data data SRC on it. So any attribute data SRC, obviously you're not going to give it the red border, um, but you might want to give it a min width and a min height just to make sure it's taking up a little bit of space. Um, but again, it hopefully if everything goes well, uh, if it, as long as everything goes well, when you load in your page, they should be loading before they get to that. So again, you might want to experiment with it, but again, I'm loading from Unsplash, so it's much, much slower than if I was loading from my own uh, source, but if you do need to make that a bigger number, by all means, you could go ahead and do that. So many cool things you can do with intersection observers. So uh, if you haven't seen the other videos in this series, if you want to see some, this one was more of like a practical use for it where it's just really good for performance. But in the other parts of the series, I did look at cool stuff you can do with it from sliding in stuff to the navigation that sort of fades. You know, when you have a transparent background and then it, it changes when you scroll further down. Um, so we looked at how we can do those. Strongly encourage you to go and check those out if that sounds interesting to you at the very least. Uh, but if not, thank you for watching this one. I hope you learned something along the way. If you haven't yet subscribed and you like this video and you like the other ones in the series, please consider subscribing. And if you really want to make sure you never miss anything I do, check out my newsletter. It's down in the description below or there to show up on the sidebar at one point. And it's just a look at um, it. Just it makes sure you don't miss anything that I'm up to. Plus a little bit of bonus stuff every now and then as well. A big thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here on this channel. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. It really means a lot to me and it helps me keep doing everything I do here. And of course, a big thank you to my supporters of awesome Fernando, Lauren and Jonathan, you guys just thank you very much for your very generous support. I really look forward to seeing you there next week, but until then, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome. I don't, why am I, I don't know why I was holding my hands like that. That's kind of weird. Oh, <laughs> see you later.